Well, I'm continuing with my 6502 project, my DIY 6502 project, and this is version 1.1 of my register board. Um, I made a register board before version 1.0, and it wasn't that good, and I've replaced it with this one. So I'm going to try out this board and see how I get on with it. Now what I'm doing is, because I'm making a 6502 CPU out of um, 7400 series ICs, I've decided to put them all on boards, so I've modularized it into eight different boards like this. So that is part of the 6502. This contains at the moment the X register and the A register, as you can see there, um, and there's space for the Y register and the stack pointer, the S register. But I can't get the chips, I've run out of chips at the moment due to uh, the problems in China. So. Uh, I'll populate those when I get those parts, but I should be able to at least check out the A and X registers right now. And just to explain a few other bits and pieces, at the back here I've got my um, power supply, so that's just my, that's the 5 volt or 4.99 volt power supply, that's all that is. Um, and this is a test harness here to enable me to test various different boards. So I just plonk a board here, test it with a test harness and check that the board works before putting all the boards together and making the finished thing, which I think would be very confusing to do in one go. This is a bunch of switches that let me control the various control lines that go into the boards that would come from one of the boards I haven't made yet, which is the controller board. And this is um, something that allows me to put things onto the data bus. So I'm putting a number there, uh, what's that, seven onto the data bus. So if I select a number and publish that, I'd be publishing that onto the data bus. So you've got the screen here showing what's on the data bus. Um, the data bus is just eight data lines. It's an eight bit data bus, which runs throughout the whole of the CPU. Um, and it also runs throughout this board here. So if I publish this value of seven onto the data bus, you can see the value of seven on the screen here. And we get it in decimal at the top, binary down the bottom and hex down the other side. Let's just demonstrate that 129, for example, publish it There's 129. There's, you've got 129 in binary and 81, which is 129 in hex. And if I plug this board in, we should be able to give it a little bit of a test. Um, so there's my power lead. There's the power power lead in there. Oh, uh, this is this 20-way uh, IDC connection is the main set of connections going into that board, which would also be coming from the main controller. And um, then it's just going through this ribbon cable and I've sort of bodge wired from the ribbon cable to here so I can simulate the controller sending signals into the, the register board. OK, so what I'm hoping to do is to pretend basically that I'm running a program and run some very, very basic instructions. So the first instruction that might be of any interest really is to transfer something from memory into the A register. So the A register's here, the X register's here. These are actually just some LEDs to show the values in them. So a transfer memory, well, it's really, it's a load A with the value of some memory. So let's say we had some memory with the value of, well, let's do 129 again. So there was, we were pointing, let's say we were pointing at some memory with a value of 129 in it, and we want to transfer, we want to load A with the value of that memory. So we publish it onto the data bus and then the um, the store, store into A line is here. So that transfers whatever's on the data bus into the A register. So I've got store on switch eight here, store into A on switch eight here. So the, um, the control lines which are going to be coming in when I've made the actual controller, if they wanted to do a transfer from memory to A, they would do some other jiggery pokery to get the value of 129 out of RAM, they would then publish that onto the data bus into here and they would send the control signal to store it in A. So that's what I've just done. So if I then remove uh, anything from these switches here, so you can see the value is definitely in A and publish A is on uh, switch seven. So if I publish what's in A onto the data bus, there's 129 on the data bus so we can check uh, eight one, we can check that's really in the accumulator. So that's the sort of thing that would go on if you were loading A with the contents of some memory and the memory had a value of 129 in it. Now another command is transfer A to X, T-A-X. So in order to do a T-A-X command, my controller, which controls the CPU, would have to publish the A value onto the data bus, which it can do with uh, that one. 
So 129 is on the data bus and store it into X, which you can do with switch two. So I'll press that one as well. And there you go, I've transferred, copied basically the value of A into the X register. So that's a TAX. Now, what's quite interesting about the 6502 is it has some increased instructions. It's got increase for X and decrease for X. And Y is going to go here. It's got increase X, uh, Y and decrease Y. So I've got those on switches three and four. So we could increase X. There you go, we've increased it. Uh, let's increase it. What was it? It was 129. So let's increase it um, 11 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We've increased it um, 11 times, so 129, that should be 140. So let's just publish X onto the data bus so we can check. Yep, 140 in there, 8C. So that's an INC, an INX instruction, increase X. And then we could transfer X back to A. Well, let's just see a DEX, which is a decrease X. So we'll go down from 100 and we are at the moment 140 140 let's go down from 140 to 135 so we'll decrease five times one two three four five so we've got 135 in x now um, let's do a txa a transfer x to a so we'll publish x onto the data bus so it's flowing through the data bus to anything else that wants to pick up that value of 135 and we'll store it in A, which I can do with switch eight. There you go, so that's stored into switch into A now. And then we can publish A, which I can do with seven, 135, uh, and you can see it on the screen. So I've got a value of 135 in the accumulator. So what I effectively did was transfer A to X, a few increase X's, and then I transfer X back to A. And what puzzles me about the 6502 is why is it you can increase X and you can decrease X, you can increase Y and decrease Y, and presumably you increase the stack pointer S is going to go here, and you can increase and decrease that when you push things and pull things from the stack. But why can't you increase and decrease A? I could never work that out. Um, and so what I've done, I've implemented it in the X register and the A register in two different ways. I've implemented X as a counter, it's an up-down counter with a 74HC193. In fact, there are two of them. In fact, let's just zoom in on that. Yeah, so I've Im implemented X, as you can see here, with two 74HC193s, which are four-bit up-down counters, and then there's a buffer um, to put the data into there, and there's a buffer to get it back out again, so that they're tri-state buffered off the um, data bus, so they're not permanently connected to the data bus, but you can disconnect them. Whereas the A register, I've just implemented it as um, a register and a buffer to get the data out so that you can see the value that's in there all the time, and then it's buffered to get the data back out again. But um, yeah, I've realized actually by looking at the circuit diagram of the 6502 that this is not how they did it in the 6502. They increased x and decrease x by passing it to the alu and just basically adding one to it or subtracting one from it and the same with y and the same with the stack pointer so i just cannot figure out why there's no increase a and increase and decrease a command it just doesn't make any sense to me i think you might as well just pass that to the alu and increase it or decrease it too i don't know